Hi everyone, welcome to the Knit and Turn Pike. Welcome to the Knitting Turnpike. My name is Gina Pike. I'm so happy that you're here today. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about another tutorial. Um, this is part of the Simpson Turnpike Knit Along. Uh, that is a collaboration with Miss Linda Simpson, who is Linda Simpson's crochet nook. Um, she and I have been knitting this uh, lace shawl and teaching you guys how to read a chart to do lace knitting. Uh, the pattern is the Ashton Shawlette. Uh, written by the amazing designer D. O'Keefe. All the information for D's patterns, for Linda, for myself, for Instagram, Facebook group, where we're sharing all of this will be down in the description box below. Today we will be doing the last tutorial in this series. So now, um, if you've been keeping up with us, if you haven't, there's no worries. All you needed to do is make a start and send us a picture to be entered in the giveaway at the, that's going to be occurring on November the 20th. It will be a live show with Miss Linda Simpson and myself, and we'll be doing that here on the Knitting Turnpike. Uh, that is a Saturday. Uh, the time will be 10 a.m. Central Standard Time in the U.S., which is 4 p.m. British Standard Time in the UK. Okay, so um, here is my shawl. I wanna show you a quick picture of it. It is not blocked. Today, I'm gonna to be taking you through how I do blocking. This is my shawl. You can see it. the edges are not very pointy or scalloped. I am going to take those points. Um, you can see how when you do the super stretchy bind off, you get these little, um, pieces that uh, point come out from your knitting. This is um, going to be where you're going to pull these into scallops. That looks like this. This is the Ashton Charlotte, the first one I did. You can see how it has these scallops. I'm going to be pulling my knitting into those points. Now, if you didn't knit yours this way, you, can st you still wanna block it because blocking is what makes this so magic and makes all of these beautiful lace sections open up. Now my yarn is a bamboo yarn, 100% bamboo. So it's a little bit different than like a wool yarn, but if you have a wool yarn, it should be kind of collapsing on itself. This was a wool yarn. And when I first knit it, it was really small. Blocking it just opened all that beautiful lace up so you can see all the lace patterns and um, enjoy all the hard work you put into making those lace yarn overs and lace patterns and make your shawl shine. I have done a blocking tutorial here before. I will put a link to the video, that video, and uh, it may have some more tips that I may not cover here today. Today I'm gonna talk specifically, I believe that was a top-down crescent lace shawl, but today I'm gonna talk specifically how to just block this shawl. Now, one of the things you need to consider is the shape of it. This is a triangular shawl, and the way that it is blocked in the pattern is the top is going to be straight. So I'm going to, um, and then you have these little points that you're gonna bring out. I'm gonna show one side, I have some, um, blocking wires. I'm going to weave a wire through. Now if you do not have a wire, you can get a piece of yarn, a thick piece of yarn, like a bulky weight or something, something with some strength to it. Weave it through with a darning needle through the picots like I'm going to be showing you how I'm doing it with a wire and pull one side. I'm going to pull one side with a wire and the other side I'm just going to use my handy dandy blocking pins which are these here, I have just a big old block of uh, T-pins, stainless steel. I think these are 500 pins, and I bought them on Amazon. Um, these are always enough. I just bought a big old box because they're always enough. I think there's um, 500 pins in here. But anyway, uh, let's uh, get on to the, uh, sh to the blocking part. The one thing you need also is a... I know I'm using a bamboo yarn, but I still use a wool wash. You want to clean your shawl really well because um, when you go to wash, if you go to wash it again, you will have to block it again. 
your fibers might they might not if you have an if you have an acrylic a yarn that's mostly acrylic the blocking is going to be a little bit harder for you you still want to pull it into place put it on your blocking mats like I'm doing but if it's mostly acrylic you will need to steam your yarn and which in essence kind of kills the acrylic fibers now I'm not talking about that today if you do guys guys do have questions about that we can talk about it in the live or you can put questions below or you can email us and we'll answer all of those or put it in the Facebook group as well um, and we'll answer your questions about that um, but I've never actually done that I know Linda has um, steamed her um, shawl to get it to stay open now um, let me think the other thing you're going to need is some blocking mats if you do not have blocking mats you can still do this blocking technique you may want to get like a big quilt and some extra towels place it down on a, a big open space where you can block this and block it you can even put that on your bed over your bed and use your bed to block this out if your bed's big enough so there are several different ways to do this without having blocking mats specifically all right so let me get I'm going to take you to the sink I'm not going to show you the water filling in I think that'll be too noisy but I'll show you how I soak it in the sink and then I'll show you take it take you to the blocking boards and show you how I'm going to block this so let's get started All right, I'm going to be using a little bit of this wool wash. This is Knit IQ, a no rinse delicate wash. And I'm just going to put a little bit into my tub here. That's probably enough. Just have one, just three little squirts. And then I'm, I mostly use cold water. Okay, that water is cold to warm. I don't wanna use hot. And all you do is you just put your knit in there and just let it soak. Let it soak for about 15 to uh, 20 minutes and you do not have to rinse the soap out. I, if there's a little bit of suds like this, I will rinse, rinse it off just gently. Go get it. I'm going to go get a towel. I'm going to put this in a towel after it's had a soak and then I'm going to uh, gently just squeeze some of the dripping water out. I'm not ever going to wring this. All right, so I'll be back after it's soaked for about 15 to 20 minutes. All right, now we've been letting this soak. You just wanna pick this up and carefully, I just squeeze, I do not rain, I just squeeze. And I have a lot of suds here. Again, I'm not wringing, I'm just gently squeezing out some excess water. I'm gonna pour this out. We just rinse this out a little bit just a little bit of the suds I've got too many I got carried away okay squeeze a little bit of the excess water out still want it to be wet so it's not a big deal so I have a towel here give me a second here I have a towel and let me put this across here Doesn't have to be perfect. This is hard to find a spot here to film in the kitchen in one spot and do all this. So I just um, release this like this and then I just put it in my towel and then I just gently, I roll it up like this, just roll it. And then I just gently squeeze the rolled up part of my shawl. I'll show you what it looks like here in a second. I'm sure I'm out of frame. But this is what it looks like, all rolled up. Now we're going to go to the blocking mats and pin this out. Now, I have my blocking mats here, all spread out. I hope you can see this angle. I have some wires here that I'm going to be using to uh, show you how to do this. Now, I haven't used these very much, but they're just um, from Knit Picks blocking wires, like that. I'm going to wipe them off before I use them in case there's any type of uh, 
this is just a wet paper towel. Any type of residue on here that you don't want to get on your lace shawl. So I'm just wiping them off like that. I don't think I need a, a couple of them. The top's going to be spread out pretty straight. And this is for the side. I'm going to do one side with this and one side with my the way I normally do it, which is just pinned out with pins. I have my steel T pins, and then I have these Knitter's Pride knit blockers, which I'm going to use for the top. And these are just little things with pins in them, so you can easily do several pins at one time. So I'm going to do that with the top. Okay, I've got my tape measure. Now I'm going to have my shawl in here. I'm going to lay this out in a way that facilitates the way I'm going to block it. I'm just put my wet towel over here out of the way. And as you can see, I still have, I'll show you here in a second. I'm going to do this on the right side. So I'm just going it out like this. Give myself some room to pull these points. Again, you can do this on a table with some quilts under it or towels. You can do this on your bed, anywhere you have room to spread this out and do it. Now, it's hard for me to get on the floor here, but I like to do it on the floor here in our den because I have a fan up above me that I turn on to help facilitate facilitate the drawing process. So, anyway, I get this kind of spread out and nice and even. As you can see, I do still have a string here. This is uh, for my ends being woven in. I leave those attached until I finish blocking and then after everything is blocked, I um, cut those off. Everything is woven in though. I would weave those in and then I block it and then I cut them off. So, all right, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to weave in this blocking wire. I'll use the blocking wire on that side over there. I think I need a couple more blocking mats at the top over there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is you're going to look at the Pocos. There is a, at the bottom of this, um, let's see, it's right here. You can kind of see how it flares out. I'm going to grab that Pico and I'm going to just weave my shawl through this. Now, again, I said in the um, introduction, that if you do not have blocking wires like this, you can always use a tapestry needle and a strong piece of yarn if you want to pull these like this. Like I've never done this before. I've never used these. I always like to use my pins and this is probably a lot faster, but I'm kind of old fashioned. So I like to do it the old way. Let me get over here. Finish this up. After I get this woven in, I'm going to uh, pin the top. And then we'll go from there. So I'm going to put this through this one twice. Those two wires through there to cover the length of this. I'm going to pin the top out nice and straight and I'm going to use these blocking wires just to make it nice and straight. And I'm just going to take these and insert at the top above where those yarn numbers are. That little garter strip edge is what I'm using. This part right 
Can you see it? The garter strip edge. That's where I'm grabbing the pin. And I'm also kind of pulling it a little bit as I go. Stretch it out. This is about opening up all the lace in your shawl. You do not have to have these little blockers to do this. You can do this with pins. You do not have to have these. These just make it go a little bit faster when you want to do something straight. So, do not feel like you have to go buy these at the store because they can be quite expensive for one box. It's pretty, I wouldn't say they're cheap at all. So, yeah, you can get them for presents if you want to have some of these. It's a great present to have. See how it's opening all this beautiful lace in here. Also pin in front of the wire. Keep it situated. And there you go. There's one side already done. Now you can see why the blocking wires are nice to have because you pull it and that whole side is done. Now this side is going to take a little bit longer because I'm going to pull it with the pins. But I kind of actually prefer this because I don't know, I just have done it this way for a long time. So I just start at one end and I go to the other end and try to keep it even. First point. Oops. Don't be afraid to pull it. Kind of block a little bit aggressively to open this all up. a stickler for everything being spaced out exactly. I kind of just go by how the shawl is knitted, but uh, if you want to be a stickler, you can get your tape measure 
and measure the distance between these four points and make it be like if you want to do brief. This is about three and a half inches. This is three inches. I don't really care, but if you want to make them every, you know, perfect, you can. I don't like Because I like to spend the time making sure it looks like I want it to look. Because once you pin it, whoops, you can step back and just see, you know, what might be a little, need a little bit more pulling, a little bit more adjusting. This can take, a, sometimes it can take quite a while to pin all this out. Today is not taking that long. My shawl is still pretty wet, but in the process of the, pulling this out and pinning it, if you find that your item has um, dried out, you can just get a spray bottle of water, just water, lightly spray it, and grab the towel that you used to dry it and just dive, dive the excess water off, you know, wet it again. Kind of like when you go to the barber shop and they spray your hair wet to cut it sometimes. Just like that. Because you want this to be wet and you want it to dry into place. Now, I'm going to take, step back for a second and take a look at this and see if I like the look of it. See if there's any place I see that might need to be adjusted. Didn't realize I was halfway off here. So, I will show you the bottom of that here in a second. Here we go, so see, that's what this looks like. You can see the one side with the wire, and then I did the top. I got the center, and then I've got all of that, that side is the side I pinned out. Oh, excuse me a second here. That's the side I pinned out. You can see how I opened up all the lace. All right, so now I adjusted the bottom. I didn't really like that. I wanted, I adjusted the bottom here. I wanted that more of a point. I'm gonna pull that to more of a point. All right, so I pulled the center more to a point, adjusted that, and that's, what it ends up looking like. You can see how that's all blocked, opened and blocked. And there you go. And that's my blocked shawl. I never got to mention when I was over there is that I let that dry for a few hours. You can feel it and tell when it's dry. Um, I, uh, sometimes it'll be just a few hours. Sometimes it'll be, um, it can be overnight. I'll probably let this one dry overnight. And then, uh, after you unpin it, it should be blocked fully fine. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial, this blocking tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me or Linda, um, at, uh, in our emails in the description box below. Uh, I'm, I didn't realize I wasn't showing the whole view, so please forgive me for cutting off the bottom of that. Thank you for participating in the Simpson Turnpike Knit Along with Linda and me. And we have enjoyed you being with us so much. It has been wonderful to see you guys jump into lace knitting, learning how to knit with a, a chart, and challenging yourselves a little bit. We really do appreciate it. And 
Thank you again for watching this video. If you are new, this is part of my Simpson Turnpike knit along that I did with Linda Simpson. Please go watch some of the other videos in my playlist. That, and also some of some we Linda and I alternated back and forth. So some of the videos for the charts are on her channel as well, which is linked in the description box below. But those of you who've been watching, supporting me, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and take care of yourselves and I will see you all very, very soon.